So, like, machines can talk in this way only if they're, like, kind of directly connected to each other through hubs and switches or um, just a network cable between two machines. Um, uh, and if they want to talk to a machine that's off the network, they need to do something else. Um, so we need a way to kind of define, like, what a network is. You know, if I'm a machine trying to talk to some IP address, I need to know whether I can talk directly to it by setting its MAC address as the destination in the frame, or whether I need to do something else that we'll talk about in a bit. Um, and the way that we do that is, as well as each machine having an IP address, we can configure it with, we give them a thing called a subnet mask. Uh, and you've probably seen these if you've ever delved into the network settings on your PC. So this one, 255.255.255.0, um, and that's used in combination with the source and destination IPs to decide if they're on the same network, or in this case, the same subnet, um, because our overall network is going to be made of many subnets. Um, and I always thought that these are actually really difficult to understand, like 255.255.255.0. What does that mean? Um, and unlike just about everything else in the world, I think it's actually a lot easier to understand uh, in binary. So uh, 255 turns out to be a, an 8-bit binary number, um, which is all ones. So uh, the rule is, if two machines are on the same subnet, if the bits in their IPs match where the corresponding bit in the subnet mask is a 1. So let's take a couple of examples to uh, kind of see what that really means so these are two machines that are on the same subnet so we've got 192.168.0.1 and 0.2 and they both have the same subnet mask 255.255.255.0 and in binary what that looks like is you know all ones for the 255s and then all zeros for the zero because it's zero um, and then these are these two ip addresses translated into binary here and like I said, the rule is if the bits are 1 in the subnet mask, then the ones in the IP have to match the corresponding ones. So if you imagine this as a series of columns here, everywhere there's a 1, if these match, then they're on the same subnet. That's the rule. So we can see here these bits differ. This is 0, 1, and this is 1, 0, which is uh, in decimal 1 and 2, because you get the one's column, the two's column, the four's column, the eight's, and so on. Um, but because there's zeros here, that's fine, they can differ. Uh, but if we look at two machines that are on different subnets instead, so this is uh, on 0 0.1 and 3.1.2, uh, we can say there's a 255 here in this corresponding segment. And if you know about subnetting already, you will know that means they're on different networks. Um, but why they're on different subnets really is because here where there are ones in the subnet mask, the corresponding bits in the two addresses differ. So when any machine is going to send out uh, and going to try and communicate with another machine using IP, the internet protocol, pretty much the first thing it does is it looks at its own IP address, and the destination IP address, and its subnet mask to figure out whether it can talk to that machine directly. Uh, and if it can, it will either look in its ARP cache uh, to find the MAC address or it will use ARP to figure it out uh, like we talked about at the beginning. Uh, and <laughs> if uh, it turns out it's on a different network, it's a little bit scuppered <laughs> for now at least. Uh, we'll figure out what it does soon. So uh, kind of a, a quick aside because who wants to say 255.255.255.0? It's a really lot, large amount of sil syllables. I really don't want to do it. Um, there's also this uh, CEDAR or, or CIDAR notation, the classless interdomain routing notation. Um, uh, and all this is is how many consecutive ones there are in the uh, subnet mask. So this sort of classic 255.255.255.0, you might hear referred to as a slash 24. Uh, and what that means is there are 8, 16, 24 ones in a row in the subnet mask uh, and they have to be contiguous as well it's worth pointing out it's not valid to have a zero uh, in the middle of here and then go back to ones they all have to be stacked towards the left hand side 
Uh, so other um, uh, network sizes you would hear, you might hear about a slash eight, for example, which would be just eight ones, and then these would be all zeros. Uh, and that makes the network bigger. So here we've got up to 255, kind of, 254 machines that we can have all on one network. If these were zeros as well, then we would increase that by a factor of 255 for a slash 16, and then another factor of 255 for a slash 8. Uh, so uh, this effectively controls the size of your network.